Chief Miller operates the largest social media page dedicated to the men and women of the fire service from around the world. Check him out on Instagram at Chief underscore Miller. Find him on Twitter at Chief underscore Miller. And check out the website where you can find Chief Miller Apparel at ChiefMillerApparel.com. You're listening to Views from the Jump Seat Podcast. Bunker up. Buckle in. It's time for the show to begin. One thing remains constant in the fire service is that we start day one in the jump seat. So if you're a chief officer, welcome back. If you're the day one probationary, welcome aboard. It's time for Jump Seat Radio. Well, all right. Well, welcome back, Jump Seat Radio. It's time for the podcast where we finally get the fire chief on here. Chief Lasky, I have been chasing you around the nation. You've been in Charleston. and we've been in FDIC. You've been on top of my list to get on the podcast. First and foremost, thank you for coming on Jump Seat Radio, and welcome to the show. It's my honor. It's my honor, right? It really, it really is. I know uh, uh, you and I have bumped into each other all over the place. We've talked about it before, but uh, uh, it's an honor to be here with you. You've been doing some great things, pal, and. Uh, um, you know, it's that circle of friends that you run with, um, that, uh, you know, especially the instructors that, you know, there's, there's some great folks out there doing some great things and you're one of them. And, uh, I appreciate everything you're doing, pal. Oh, thanks chief Lasky. We remind me to tell the story about you and I tweeting each other as we're riding in the van through Missouri. That was one of my best experiences on the road. <laughs> that was just an amazing experience. I, I sent a tweet to, I will tell it now while we're, we're sitting in this Missouri, it was pouring a snow down everybody's delayed, everybody's cranky. So I, I sent a tweet out and put at chief Lasky and all of a sudden he tweets back. So in a matter of three hours, I think we sent out like 30 tweets each. <laughs> <laughs> That was a trip. That was a, yeah. I, I ended up getting out of there, but a bunch of people got stuck. Yeah. Um, that was, that's a great conference there. Um, they hold every year, but uh, yeah, a little bit of snow in certain parts of the country just screws things up. You can go up to, Min- <laughs> go up to Minnesota. They don't even you cancel know, school. To, <laughs> Minneapolis is like, you know, we got two feet of snow. So what, you know, yeah. what's your, you know, stop your crying, but uh, all right, but yeah, chief. Great so go ahead. I know that you're the pride and ownership guy, and, and and I know that you've been a fire chief in multiple locations. But I want to dive a little bit deeper back into firefighter Lasky. Man, I tell you, if anybody's not listened to your speeches, your speeches and classes are phenomenal. One of the best of going out there. But I want to kind of turn the clock back a little bit, back to when you're in the jump seat. This podcast is based around street level firefighters. Number one, where did you start your jump seat time at? Well, I started as I started as a volunteer in uh, Justice, Illinois. What, what ended up happening? Back things up was, uh, uh, if I could tell a little story here. Sure. About, um, you, you know, it's there's a lot of people out there, Ryan, that are that are that are struggling. You know, what I'm saying a lot of young folks, a lot of young you know men and women that are out there trying to str- str- they're struggling with where they're going, what they're looking for, and so on and so forth. And right. I grew up I grew up in a firehouse. My old man was a firefighter, and I was born and raised in the South Side of Chicago. My dad was a firefighter just outside Chicago. And uh, so I hung out. It was, I couldn't, I, I couldn't decide if I want to be, you know, Jim Reed from Adam 12 or, or Johnny Gage from Mercy. I was stuck between the two. So when my brother was eight years old, my younger brother and I was 12, he was diagnosed with a, uh, inoperable brain tumor. Oh and, um, yeah. Inoperable brain tumor. And, um, he'd be alive today with today's medical science, but back then, you know, it was bad. And, uh, right. he didn't know that he was sick, sick. He thought he needed glasses and we were sleeping in the same bedroom. He woke up and was having a nightmare in the middle of the night. And he said, Ricky, they want to put me in a, a wooden box, a coffin. They want to put me in a wooden, wooden box. And, uh, he was scared and I was, you know, and I, I panicked. I, there's no counseling back then for right. kids. Right. Instead of spending every moment I could with them, uh, I spent every second I could away. I was scared. And, and t- until this day, I, I still I still can't let that go. I know I should, but I can't. I'm sure he's forgiven me. Uh, but uh, uh, so anyway, he lived for 18 months before he passed away. Uh, but for the next 18 months and about two years after that, so about three years time, I was hanging out with the kids, some kids from my dad's firehouse that were older than me. Right. And we went on, we went on a rampage. I do a program called Bill of Tomorrow's Leaders and Successors for middle schoolers and like freshmen in high school, stuff like that. And and the, the emphasis I try to make is, look, I, I, I hang with these kids. We went out. We were breaking into cars. We were stealing cars. We burglarized houses. Wow. We we did all kind. We never got away with nothing. We, we got it. We got the cops hooked us up for everything. I can't tell you how I, it got to be so bad. My mom wouldn't even come pick me up at the police station. My uncle had to come and get me. Wow. And, um, 
I finally got to a point where, uh, and I, I show this one picture, Ryan, it's a, it's a picture, it's a black and white photo of like uh, uh, all the, all the cops, this particular uh, precinct, if you will. And, right. Um, detectives and all the white shirts in the front row, and then so on and so forth. And I, 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 when I use it, I do the same thing when I do, you know, law enforcement classes about the difference you make in someone else's life that you really don't know that you, that you are, you know. And I point, I go, this guy arrested me for driving out my driver's license. This guy arrested me for driving a stolen car. This guy arrested me for burglary. This guy, this guy. And there's a big arrow in the back with uh, an arrow pointing to a guy, and it says "saved" above him. And a lot of people uh, attach that word "saved." to the church somehow. And I guess in a roundabout way I did, it was a cop named Frank Sinicki, a young cop. And he brought me in, took the handcuffs off, made me sit down, threw the handcuffs on the table and said, Lasky, the only way I'm going to make, uh, the only way I'm going to keep you from going to jail is by making you a police cadet. I go, I don't think so. I'm not going to be a cop, <laughs> a firefighter. He goes, no, I don't think you understand. You know, we're starting this new group through the Boy Scouts, brand new thing through them called the Explorers. Right. It's Monday night, 6 p.m. I want your uniform sizes. You will be here. And, that, you know, I said, I don't think you understand. I'm not going to be a firefighter. He goes, no, I don't think you understand. You don't do this. You're going to jail right now. And I went, all right, here are my sizes. I'll see you Monday <laughs> night. And except for a couple minor scrapes, you know, in high school, you get into a fight or something. Right. I never got in trouble again. And it, it, and what the point I try to make with that first off is it only takes one individual in your life to make a difference. It does. Um, how many times, Ryan, have you had firefighters come through your, or kids or fire, let's say firefighters get hired on. And, you know, when you ask them, so what made you, you know, why'd you get into this? Do you have family? And they go, dude, I remember the fire engine. I was a little kid driving down the street and they're going to a call and they blew the horn and the firefighter waved at me. And I went, I want to do that. And it was that, that glancing blow of a, of some kind of contact that changed their life forever. So for me, that's what it was. So I did the whole Explorer thing through high school. Um, got hooked up when I was 18 with uh, justice. They know their department was, um, um, uh, absorbed by another department a few years back. But um, I loved the job. I loved, I mean, I, I couldn't wait to get into EMT school. I couldn't wait to get in paramedic school. I did a little thing with the White Sox, uh, went, played ball uh, in between the first, I call them two spring trainings. I went to paramedic school. Nice. And I, went to the, I went to the police academy. And in Illinois, you got to be 21 to be a career firefighter police officer. So I was a volunteer firefighter and a part-time firefighter paramedic. And then I got hired full-time as a cop first. So I did that while I was doing the fire thing part-time, riding backwards. And uh, I wasn't good at being a cop. I tell people all the time because my first year as a cop, I got shot, stabbed, and burned. Wow. And, uh, my uh, FTO said, you suck so bad last year, you got shot through the windows of the police station. <laughs> and it wasn't at me. It was at the uniform. But anyway, I loved, I, loved being, I loved being a police officer. I'm very partial law enforcement and dispatch. But um, So justice is where I got my start. Um, we had a mix, like anywhere else, of young guys. Mm -hmm. And we had a mix of old timers, you know, uh, we had guys with leather helmets that were all bent up in the front and, you know, just all crusty and, you know, these, these kind of, we had the young guys and, uh, um, uh, but got my start there and, uh, I was blessed. I worked with some great people. Uh, Ron Zarzinski ended up, Bar Barney Sadowski, uh, was our chief. He had retired from Chicago as a district chief, which is four trumpets. That's one, I think it's like one under, underneath the assistant deputy commissioner or something. So that being said, um, he gave me my start and, uh, um, and, and that was it. We were rolling from there. So, but I had to tell that story at the beginning, right? I tried to emphasize that, that, you know, there's a lot of people out there that don't know, or don't take the opportunity to make a, a difference in someone else's life. And I wouldn't be sitting there. I wouldn't be in the fire service. I would not, I don't know what I'd be doing. Might be in prison. Be, if, so. Yeah. If it wasn't for, if it was for Frank Sinicki, you know, that cop, um, uh, he's passed away now. I, I wouldn't be here today. So chief, I never, I would have never guessed you for a hoodlum. Dude, I'm telling you, and I, neither would I. And, uh, um, you know, it doesn't take much to hang with the wrong crowd. And yeah. like I said, I got away with nothing. I, I there's nothing. I, I mean, whether it was breaking into boxcars on trains or hopping, but we got caught. I mean, I was a horrible criminal. I, mean, I was just really, <laughs> I was every cop's dream. They, I'd come home and they'd be sitting in front of my house already going, come on, get in the car. We know it was you. And I'm like, God dang, I'm that bad. You know that, you know, and I just come back, go, okay, you got me, you know, just, I, that's how, it was just horrible. But thank God uh, there was a police officer out there that uh, actually a dispatcher told him, I think he's a good kid. He just needs some good, uh, some good mentoring. So, man, 
<laughs> that is an unbelievable story, Chief. I mean, that is phenomenal. That's it for Jump Seat Radio for today. That's your man. <laughs> I mean, that's phenomenal. Hey, so make a difference, right? Well, and the thing about it is, Chief, is is what's going through my mind is the difference that you're paying it back in such a bigger way now. That if it wasn't for that young man back then, imagine how many folks that you've been able to influence because you've got this great platform. I mean, through the the luck and through through the hard work that we've done, you have this platform now because now, I mean, I'm I'm, I'm going to be quite honest with you. Your video of the pride and ownership with you and your desk, I bet has been downloaded and shown to tens of thousands of firefighters. Uh, that may have never happened if it wasn't for one Chicago police officer. Right. It, it's, you know, and, and that's, and that's it. It's, and that tape happened on accident too. We could talk about that in a little bit, but you're right. And it's, a, and I'm honored that people do. It's uh, the, I, a lot of people, they, they watch the pride and ownership video from the keynote from when I did that in 2001. And then, you know, the welcome to your first day to fire service video. That's part of the uh, fire engineering's firefighter one, two handbook. I wrote chapter one for the mission and traditions of the fire service. But, right. but, but right. I was blessed. I mean, I, you know, I went to work as a career firefighter, um, you know, where I really settled in was, was in Bedford park. And uh, I worked at, you know, I worked at another place for a little bit. Um, uh, great boss, not a good place to work. Just uh uh, not a whole lot of honor, not a whole lot of integrity. And right. uh, I had, I had to move on. Uh, I, I was, I, I got offered the job uh, in the city, the same thing off the job in Bedford park. The problem was the city of Chicago just went through a strike. Right. It, it just, I couldn't, I couldn't, my dad was a union guy and I, I just couldn't do that. My, as it turns out, some of my best friends are city firefighters. The best man at our wedding uh, for my wife and Jamie and I uh, uh, is Ray Hoff and Ray and Bobby are the backtrap brothers. Uh, Ray passed away a few a few years ago, but uh, uh, but I, I was blessed. I went to work for a fire department. I brag as a firefighter riding backwards. I had I had a couple of incredible officers. I had one Bill Allen, and we could talk about later. I brag on him in every single class ride. He is my my, my best buddy John Salka says I wish I could have worked for him. I always tell John I wish I could have worked for Pete Lund. Oh yeah, he was Lieutenant Rescue Three, and it was. You know, John Norman, Jay Jonas, and John Salka, among other guys, ride backwards for Pete as firefighters. <laughs> Are you kidding yeah. me? Yeah, John <laughs> Norman, Jay Jonas. Jay and John went to proby school together and carpooled. Jay uh, is godfather for one of John's sons who's a captain of the Marines. And right. Special forces there. Um, but I, I, can, I could imagine. And Pete Lund, what, you know, the, Bill Allen. Bill Allen, as a young firefighter, right, he was the kind of officer when you pulled into the parking lot, I couldn't wait to get inside. I used to leave stuff in my car. I'd run in so quick. We had, we had 10 guys, 15 guys, you know, we had a lot of people on shift. Right. I couldn't wait. I'd see his car and I'm like, ah, you know, cause we had the big hazmat squad. And, you know, I was a paramedic or a firefighter. I was at the truck company. I'm like, oh, I can't, I can't wait to get in there with him. And just, he was just, I could, I could go on about it. And we talk about leadership and mentor, you know, and mentorship and everything. It, it was Bill Allen. He's freaking incredible. Um, but as a young firefighter, I was blessed to have some great people around, some great mentors, um, you know, that would let me screw up when I needed to, but keep me from screwing up where it would get me or someone else hurt. You know? Man, those are few and far between nowadays, Chief. Yeah, yeah. I, so I'm, mine is Captain Davy Wagner, and you met him when you're here. You, you'd recognize because his mustache is like epic. It's like almost Billy G level mustache. <laughs> but it's like it's so funny when you. How when, do they do it? How do they drink coffee with that? Do they have to pull, pull it back? <laughs> It's it man, you drove you drove home such a huge point when people talk about leadership. Is Captain Dave allows me to make my mistakes. He's not too harsh on the punishment because he sees both sides of it. But it's like when we're in a dangerous situation is when he really steps it up and, and pulls the whip. It's, oh, it's just yeah. I mean, and, and aren't those the good bosses you want to work for? Is, oh. You know, I've got an article I already submitted this, you know, you know how it is. You write them. It's right. They're always out there because the magazine is always three months ahead of you yep. on the bed. On the one. And and the title of the article is I want a boss who cares more about me and my family than about being my buddy. <laughs> you know, because there's too many guys out there that are worried about yep. keeping everybody happy instead of leading and take care of people. And, you know, there's I mean, but I'll just say it, a buddy will get you hurt and killed. A leader, a good boss won't. Right. You know, and. You know, so the good ones will keep you, 
they'll, they'll give you enough rope to let you get out there and explore, do what you got to do, but they know where to keep you from getting hurt. I tell the story of uh, we had a pediatric cardiac arrest come in. I was working the box back when I was in the jump seat, and the ambulance door slung open. My gear went flying out. The SABA went flying out. So Captain Dave had to pick up the pieces. So we hit, we dinged a car on the way out. It was a working pediatric arrest. I mean, there's still no excuse for it. He brought me in the office and said, okay, Ryan, go ahead and shut the door. I'm like, oh, uh, just like that song, Here Comes the Boom. I'm like, I'm waiting on it. <laughs> he looks at me and says, was you driving a little fast? Yes, sir, I was. He said, that'll be all. I'm like, what? Are you freaking kidding me? It's like, where's my butt chewing? I never said another word, and I've never felt that bad another day in the life of my fire service. Just with that. Well, it, it- it is that way where you don't want, you know, and we, we talk about this in our classes. I know, I know you do as well that, you know, we were kind of, you and I were kind of raised differently where we were more worried about disappointing our boss to get oh. upset. If, if you and I get stood on our head and our boss says, what were you thinking last year? What were you thinking? <laughs> You're like, oh shit. I just, <laughs> I got all this money in the bank. I work, I get here early and now I gotta, I gotta, it's like running, it's like running up a down escalator. I use that in <laughs> class where, you know, as a kid, you run up the down escalator, you stop to take a breath, you go and you lose like nine steps. You got to run back up. Right. I'm like, ah, oh, God, I'm just, I, I just, I just, and I wasn't mad that I got to shoot out. I was mad at myself because I felt like I disappointed him. And I don't, you, know? you, I can't stand disappointing Captain Wagner. I mean, he is, I would go to the ends of the earth, kill people before I would disappoint my Captain Wagner and my captain now. Oh. It's the same thing. I mean, we were hooking up the hydraulics the other day, and I dumped the pump before he had it and sprayed him with hydraulic oil. And he was like, he looks at me and says, Ryan just shakes his head. I'm like, Cap. And he's like, that could have been bad, Pankton. Uh, yeah, Captain, it could have been. <laughs> <laughs> well, and you, and the things that it, what's funny about the good bosses, I, we, we just did a show not too long ago about, I'm, I'm just, you know, with a lot of the, the Facebook firefighters that, you know, I, 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 I just got to a point where I'm, I'm a little tired of reading. You know, yeah. a, a boss does this and a leader does this. A boss will yell at you, a leader. I'm like, I've worked for great bosses and I've worked for some bad bosses. And right. I know people that couldn't find the word leader with two hands and flashlight <laughs> and a C&I dog. Um, but, but I, you know, I've worked for some great, if I, can I, can I share my first day in the firehouse as a firefighter story? Absolutely. With Bill, with Bill and I talk about this in, in pride and ownership a little bit, Ryan, but my first day in the firehouse with my lieutenant, I'm, I'm a brand new firefighter and it's about 1030 in the morning. And a firefighter paramedic and Bill Allen, my lieutenant, he had 31 years in a job, a long time as a lieutenant. And he probably don't even remember to start. I mean, it's a, I was getting to that point. Most good bosses don't even remember because it's just, that's what they do. And they're like, what? I did what? Really? I said that or whatever, because that's not, they're not, they're going, hmm, right. I, wonder who I'm, I wonder who I'm a mentor today. That's not what they do. <laughs> they just, they're just great bosses. And he goes, come on, last, come here, sit down for a second. He goes, look, I, I understand your old man was on a job. I don't really care about that right now. Right. Let me tell, tell you how things work in this firehouse right here. And he points out, he goes, you see that pumper out there? The reason we take care of that pumper is because it is, it is, it is, it is, it is. He, he, he went on about 20 minutes, right, about the pumper and the tools. Never once did he say it's about the public. Like, you know, you're going to take care of the public. And never once did he say that. He talked about the pump. And he said, you remember when you were a kid, you read the books, you saw the TV shows, you saw the – the fire engine pulled out of the, the, the firehouse a little bit or sit on the apron. There was always a firefighter polishing. And he went, he said, he said, he said the bell and he did this. And he goes, you know why? Because they're done. He goes, they're polishing the bell. Cause they're done. He goes, they don't start with the bell. They finish with the bell. That right. means for the back to the front, for the top, the bottom, they check the rig, the bell is the fire. That's it. Done. 20 minutes, right. About the pumper, the tools. And everyone wants to say it's about the public. Then he says, you see this building. He points out, he looks around. He goes, you see this building. This is our home. I know it says fire station and a marquee, but this is a firehouse. This is our home. You will treat this building like it was your home. If you come in your next workday and your name is next to like Yulaski, next to on a daily sheet, cleaning toilets, that's not hardship labor. You're cleaning the toilets in our home. And then he went, he did about 10 minutes on, then he said, he points, you can see that old guy in the kitchen. That's Danny Godfrey. Danny Godfrey's got 32 years here as a firefighter. If I ever see you and him in the kitchen, same time, He's pouring his own cup of coffee. I will kick your ass. You will pour his coffee for him. He goes, if he's at the sink, wash a dish, you push by the way and you wash a dish for him. If you're done with your chores, you go grab the broom of the mop from him and you finish his. He goes, you know what that's called? That's called respect. And when you got 32 years here, some young punk kid is going to come up and do the same thing for you. You got it, capiche? I said, yes, sir. He goes, all right, let's hit it. You know what I did need when he was done with that talk, right? I didn't need my mommy. I didn't, I didn't, God bless, I believe in EAP, but I didn't need to go counseling. I wanted to run through walls of fire with the guy. But the guy told me my first day what he expected. And that wasn't the only time I was going to hear that talk. So many people make a mistake 
nowadays where they don't sit down with their new firefighter. Don't yell, don't harass, demean, humiliate, violate someone's rights. But you have every every you have an obligation to actually sit down and explain, hey, this is how it works here, kid. And you got to tell you, sit him or her down and explain that, you know, this this is not like delivering, you know, pizzas and, and newspapers. You know, there's a reason why little kids dress up and play firefighter. I used to say when Toys R Us was open, right? I said, you can go to Toys R Us right now. There's a whole aisle full of toys dedicated to you. There's yeah. a whole aisle full of toys. There's not a whole aisle full of UPS trucks. No disrespect to UPS, but it, hey, man, you want to go play UPS, man? No, <laughs> they, they want to play firefighter. That's it's right. just, you know, there's a reason why they point at, at us, not the delivery truck. And we need to bring something to the table, and that's called integrity, and that's called honor, and that's called that pride that comes with ownership. So I love that stuff. Bill Allen was just, I never realized how blessed I was to like 30 years later that I worked for such an incredible guy as a young firefighter. My probationary captain just retired, and I told him he will always be my captain. He was military, and I mean, I'll, I get a little choked up with it. And it's like I, I joined Charleston right as the meth lab explosions were happening. We had a serial arsonist running around. I, I mean, for the public, that's bad. But for a, a young probationary firefighter, oh, my soul. I mean, I tell them I had 17 working fires in the first 10 months in Charleston. And it's like the bond that you formed with him. And every time we sat down to pray at the, the dinner table, he always made sure to remember the soldiers in the battlefield because he just came back from the desert. I mean, that's the same story with Bill Allen. It's just I'm going to flip it here a little bit, Chief, because I'm going to get choked up. Because I, I, the older I get, the more I cry, and I don't even really care about <laughs> <Me> it. <So. laughs> How does a young firefighter start the evolution towards being a Bill Allen? But to, before Make that evolution of being a Captain Ed. How do they start that? Let's say, let's say the jump seat rider is listening right now that's got the eight, nine years on. They're getting ready to go to start being a boss. How does that evolution start while they're riding backwards? I, I guess the first thing I'd ask myself if I was that person, right? Like you said, I'm that eight, nine year firefighter is number one, how into the job am I? Right. I, I, it's the first thing you can't, how passionate am I about the fire service? One of my favorite sayings, it's a PowerPoint slide I have in one of my classes people who lack passion suck. You cannot be great at anything that you don't love to do. It's impossible. You can't be great at anything you don't love to do. I won't even give you very good. You right. cannot be great at anything you don't love to do. People actually, if, I think number one, it's all about passion, about where you, you can't be great and good to anyone else unless you are yourself. And that means, and it's not an ego thing, right? We've talked before. I always brag on my buddy, John Salco. John doesn't have to tell you, you know, how experienced he is because a lion, a lion doesn't have to tell you he's a lion. You already know he's a lion. <laughs> and, 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 and that being said, I'm eight or nine years. How into the job am I? How much of a student of the fire service am I? Am I into the job? You know, there's a lot of people that love, they love football, but but they don't understand the game. Does that make sense? Oh, absolutely. There's it a lot does. of people that may, yeah, there's a few that love the fire service, but don't understand why we're here. Right. Why we exist, why we do what we do. And then the next question I would say is what kind of a senior, if I'm a firefighter riding backwards, riding a jump seat, who am I impacting? You know, what am I, am I one of those that, that one of the bullies and thugs that, you know, when a new firefighter gets hired, I call names like boot or FNG or, right. you know, now shut up, don't say nothing kind of stuff, which that stuff needs to go away. You know, it's one thing to say, look, Hey Rick, come here. Look, I know you're new here, but you have two of these and one of these. <laughs> Listen a little bit more. I know you work for 13 other fire departments, but right. we want to teach our way. It's one thing to say that. It's another thing to just harass and humiliate and demean people like some people think is like, well, that's what happened to me. Well, you know what? You, mm. you know, my dad was an alcoholic. That doesn't mean I have to be an alcoholic. That's right. My job should be, I should be one of the folks that's proactive against that stuff. So uh, as a, as an eight or nine year jump seat firefighter, how into the job, how passionate I am, how much am I, am I, you know, do I understand it, what it is in the fire service and who am I mentoring? Am I that senior firefighter? Because you know this. You're, you're wearing the calipers. Any successful officer will tell you, especially company officer, that, that if they're if they're at all successful, they have a senior firefighter that's that's just kicking butt for them in the firehouse. I mean, just you know, the senior firefighter come in, hey, LT or Cap, look, um, just want to give you a heads up. This is what's going on. You know who was late again? He's late again. And we're already dealing with it. And with it, this, this, this. And we got the rig. And, and you know, you're like, oh, cool, thanks, man. I mean, instead of having a, I mean, it's good senior firefighters. So, so again, that eight or nine year jump seat firefighter. How into the job are you? How passionate are you? Who are you mentoring? Who are you? 
who are the next, you know, are you one of those go-to guys or girls, right. you know, the people that not to kiss asses, those are phonies. I'm talking, you know, who, and then what are you doing for your boss and the organization? You know, are you showing up on time? Or are you one of the Minutemen? You know, Minutemen, there's, it is, I'll tell you, it's absolutely impossible to show five minutes for your shift, be ready to go. Yeah. And you cannot show, I, I'll, I'll take a stopwatch and I'll go, okay, the moment you open your door, right? Click, right. boom. That means you have to run through the parking lot or whatever, get inside, go get your gear, put on a rig, check your air pack, get your radio and battery changed out, go get your uniform. You can't do it in five minutes. You, nope. you just can't do it. So we call them the Minutemen. They're never, you know, <laughs> you know, those kind of people just, you know, and, and those are the ones that really don't have a whole lot of respect for their brothers or sisters that are trying to get out early. Maybe, you know, they, right. they probably leave 45 minutes early because Ryan comes in early all the time. Right. But right. their relief, you know, they got, anyway, th th that's probably my biggest thing is what are you doing to, you know, we're talking about Bill Allen. Bill Allen was, was, well, I'm sure was a great driver engineer, was a great firefighter as well. Right. Um, you know, what are you doing to hone your craft to your skill um, to, to be that, you know, are you, if you're waiting for people to hand it to you, it ain't going to happen. Right. And I just said the go-to guys, well, you know, where do you find your go-to guys or gals? If you're looking for one of them, they're not off in the corner somewhere on their cell phone. Hi, you go look for them on the app. Rasp, you go, Ryan, 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 come on. I know, no, I know. And you're like, Cap, just let me finish. I'm, 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 do, I'm just painting this tool. I'm just wrapping this thing or I'm cleaning it. Ryan, come on. We got to sit. No, I'll give me five minutes. And then right. five minutes later, they're back out there. You go, give me another five minutes because I'm doing this tool now. Go to guys and gals, you know, become go to company officers, become go to chiefs. So that, that, that's, I've been trying to balance everything out with. What can I get in the way of education wise? What can I get in the way of like uh, classroom certification, all those different things to help balance off the experience side of things. But if you really want to see succession planning working, what am I doing as a nine or eight year jump seat firefighter to get the next guy or gal to where I'm at? It's so funny that you bring that up because last shift we walked in, we've got a 16 year jump seat firefighter. He's just, he's not a very good test taker. He, he wants to get on up there. He's not, he's, he's, he's older than us all. So we call him Paw Paw. Not, he's kind of cratchety. You know, we realize that we give him a little bit of space because he's getting older. He pulls me aside and he says, Hey, LT, uh, I said, how's the new kid doing? And we had this kid come in with a bad reputation. He came in. I was like, this is going to be bad, but I'm telling you, my captain and myself, we cracked the whip when he came back in. And I'm telling you what, Chief, he's going to end up being really good, especially on the ambulance, which is like blowing my mind that a kid is so passionate about riding that ambulance, which we need. We will take every single one that we got. But it's like, you know what? I called the kid yesterday. He's not at work today, but I told him this, 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 this. And I was almost like, here's my mic for you guys listening on the podcast. I was like, boom, mic drop. I didn't have to do anything. It's just like, wow, that guy. I, and to me, and, and if, if he's listening, I apologize about putting this out in public. He's ready to be an officer now because he did it without motivation or provocation. And he's looking out after his guy. Well, and, and here's another thing too. You mentioned 17 years. There, there's some, I know some firefighters that are in their twenties, 25 years sure. of a job um, that, you know, that, that just made a decision. I'll, I'll tell you, Oh God, I'll brag on him. Uh, I usually do in class. John Copeland's a firefighter in Louisville, Texas. Right. A couple hundred guys there. Um, Cope is a Marine. Cope, um, he for the for the fire academy he teaches at, he leads them in PT every day. He nice. runs them. He does everything. He is probably one of the best examples I could think of of a mentor. Like that, that firefighter, that jump seat right. fire. And he told me years ago, years and years ago, he said, I got to Louisville in 2000. He's like, Chief, you know what? I really – I'm happy. I'm on the tower ladder. I get to fight fire everywhere we go. I'm really, I just really, I, I really don't want to, I don't want to move up. And right. I, he goes, I don't want you to think poorly of me, but I just, I just want to. And I'm like, and the only thing I said was, doesn't matter to me as long as you promise me that you'll be the best firefighter you can be. Well, oh my God. <laughs> yeah. Copeland is, I, 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 let me, let me throw a story. Sarah Stocks room, Stocks, Stocks room. I always say it wrong. Sarah's a firefighter. I hired trophy club where I was just interim chief. I've been, I was fire chief. In Coeur d'Alene, Idaho, where is I'm going to be there in a week from now for the state police to the program. Absolutely incredible place, beautiful place, great fire department. I'd still be there if it wasn't for my son living in Dallas, Texas. Right. When I got off the job down here, I, I had to take it. Um, so the two places I've been fire chief, you know, I, I helped out a department as interim just to get him a new chief. Um, and that was the whole thing. It was supposed to be like Gilligan's Island for some of our 
young viewers and listeners, that's a really old show. Anyway, <laughs> it was a three hour tour that turned into like 30 years. Well, it was supposed to be three months turned into a year, but I hired Sarah and, um, in her interview, I'm just sitting and listening. The guys are doing the interview and we have HR, she's in there. And, and the question was, you know, who, who, who would you, who do you, who's had the most impact so far in your fire service career was the Academy or whoever they didn't even get the question. She said, that would be my mentor, John Copeland. And I went, boom. And I, I let them finish off. And what she's done, I said, you talking Cope from Little School? She goes, yes, sir. He was one of my academy instructors. You know, when I first got in there, I was having difficulty with push-ups, And because of his attitude, because of his confidence in me, the entire academy class wouldn't let me finish without them. They, we all finished together. Nice. And, and coincidentally, when she went to do her physical, she like scored number one and blew everybody else out of the water. Anyway, that being said, was Sarah said, Sarah's, Sarah's freaking incredible, right? She is like the dream firefighter paramedic that you could hire. Well, she got hire 50 of her. When she said John Copeland, I'm like, I want to, I want to hire her. If she thinks, if she's, he even pinned her, he, he, really? he pinned her badge at her swearing in. That's the kind of guy, you know, that John Copeland is like Lisa, Lisa Reed up in Vaughn, Canada, one of my instructors. She's a captain. Vaughn's got like, four, I don't know, several hundred people, big department. They had to, at one point, 35 women, which is pretty incredible. It is pretty incredible. Department. She, Lisa, she's in, our, she's, she's in our leadership book. She's one of my go-to guys. Lisa's the same way. She is such a great mentor. She, I guess what it is, you got to care about people. You got to care as a, as a senior firefighter. You're riding backwards. You know, I mean, I got to throw another story. You just want me to think this, if you don't mind. No, don't well, mind at all. We, well, we created the... Uh, uh, the chief safe position in Louisville. Um, I want it as a cat. It's a captain's position now. So there's two bosses in the buggy. There's a battalion chief and his driver is a captain. Right. When I first got approved, they wouldn't let me do cat. Let me do driver engineer. Anyway, the first three guys that stepped up to, to for that position, they went rode out with Stu Grant in Dallas. He was uh, in the third battalion, which they, they burned all day long there. Um, he's now the uh, ops chief for Daryl Brown and Grapevine. Stu's a great guy. Um, but I sent them for a 48-hour shift in the Bronx with John Salkin. <laughs> nice. On duty, in uniform. You can't do that now, but when right. you're able to do it, then I got permission from Chief Carruthers. Just like they're in class, like they're at the Rock. If they fall, they're, they're, they're mine. They're right. sure and everything else. So anyway, one of them calls me, Ryan, in the middle of the shift. And he says, Chief, first of all, it have been great. He goes, I, I finally know what up all night means. I used to think up all night was two calls. <laughs> He goes, what would Chief Salka nine times after midnight last night? I said, yeah, that's up all night, dude. He goes, the other thing is, Chief, to be honest, I'm kind of, I'm kind of embarrassed how we treat our rookies. They call them rookies in Texas. They're probies. I said, really? He goes, you know they don't yell at them here? Hmm. He goes, I'm sure maybe the academy, they do the whole military and, you know, attention and all this stuff. He goes, I'm, I'm sure once in a while you have to sit down and do some coaching. But he goes, they don't yell at them. They, they won't even let them pay for their lunch or their dinner. And so that's because they're making – you know, making crap back then. I mean, I was, I was kind of like, you know, um, uh, you know, there, there you go. Um, uh, he says, but no, he goes, they don't call boot or F edge. He goes, none of that stuff. He goes, actually they fight over who gets him next. Like there's another f senior firefighter going, Hey, are you done? I get him next. And they all have a little specialty area that they teach them. Like I show them this part of the engine. I show them this part of the engine. I show them this part of this. I show them this part of the station. Everybody has a little area, and it's not about yelling and hollering and screaming and calling them names and sit down, and shut up, don't say nothing. So I say, you know, tell, he goes, I'm embarrassed. I said, so what are you going to do about it, Dean? He goes, oh, I'm going to change this shit when I get back. We're going to talk about this stuff. He goes, I got to see it firsthand. And I'm like, there you go. Because they were a little miffed. I told him, when you go out there, you're going to really see the brotherhood. Mm -hmm. And there's a, her, there's a her in my brotherhood, by the way, out there for folks. But um I said, you know, and they're like, well, wait a minute, we're, we're Bryce. I understand you are, but, but you're going to see things a little bit different. And it's not to knock where we're at because you guys do a great job. And that was one of the things where I, they saw was, you know, it's more about mentoring. It's more, you know, it's more about being that senior firefighter and, and creating a little mini me that's going to, you know, what do we do next, Ryan? What do we do next, Ryan? Right. You know, you're the firefighter. Come on, let's go. Away. And then you got, you're kind of like, wait, wait, put three feet between us. Well, you keep on the <laughs> enemy. And, like, what do we, and wherever you go, they're just kind of like, you know, they're the little golden retriever puppies that just want to do it. That stuff don't happen unless you, Great. I'll tell you, you, you can be, you can hang all the stuff you want on your collar. 
if that senior firefighter, if that eight or nine year jump seat fight, if you as a jump seat firefighter don't sit down with a new firefighter and go, look, are all those people out there with the, these things on their car? Are they not t- telling you how things work here? <laughs> Good. Let me sit down. I'm, I'm, I'm going to explain how things really work here. In the absence of a senior firefighter sitting down and explaining to the new guy or gal how things work, you end up three years later going, we got these couple of guys and they really care. Did you have a talk with him? And not just one, you know. It takes more have, than one. Yeah. And, and did you just kind of get them to the point? I think that jump seat firefighter with seven, eight years, like you mentioned, has probably the greatest impact on the future of the fire service than anybody else. Jump seat firefighter, that, that firefighter, I'm telling you, has the greatest impact right there and where we're going. Chief, I'm, I just I always search when I do a, a podcast for the for the uh, the title of it. You just gave it to me. That is absolutely the God's honest truth and such an impactful statement that the jump seat seven to eight year old uh, year on the job jump seat fire has the greatest impact on the fire service. Man, that what a way to absolutely wrap up and put a bow in this thing and knock well, it out of the park. And don't you, Ryan, don't you? Don't, I mean, I've said before, I I kind of like that peer pressure. Oh yeah, you know, absolutely. I like. Because I can have you know the talk you mentioned, you mentioned the video earlier that I did for fire engineering and all that. That's all great, and I'm I'm honored that people show it to the new firefighters, and it's great that maybe a couple of chiefs will sit down and talk to Rick and Ryan, the two new firefighters. Right, and then it's great that the lieutenant or the captain will sit and talk to you or the shift chief, or whatever. But oh my God, when that when that firefighter, when a senior, you know, I looked up to Bill Allen. Oh my God, but but uh, l- let me let me tell you about Jack Kenny. Right. Let me tell you about some of the firefighters that were riding backwards with 20 years, you know, because there just was a whole lot of promotions. I was hanging on their on their every word, you know, just like, you know, I, I used to say it about Jack McCaslin. They say about some of these other guys, like you look at him, you go, oh my God, I want to be like that when I grow up. <laughs> I mean, that's who I want to be like. If you don't sit down and spend time with your new firefighters and mentor them, I, I, I'll tell you, I know we got, we're running out of time, but I'm so tired of people blaming generational stuff, yeah. and the culture, you know, the, the, if, if you want to talk entitlement, go work for Subway. All right. Make sandwiches. This is the fire service volunteer career. I know there's recruitment issues in the volunteer side, but you know, they came to us. I know you don't stand on the street corner hmm. in Charleston, hand on application, say, please come be a firefighter. They came to you. They, they fill application. They took a written, I'm sure they did a physical, they do a background. They may have done a psych test. They may have done a polygraph. They may have done, an interview, they may have done a physical exam. I mean, pro, all this stuff to get hired here. The the HR people, the personnel people, Ryan, I work with, are like, God, we just wish that people would do their jobs and lead, because we end up having all these problems to fix years later in the absence of good, strong mentors and leaders. And that's where that senior firefighter, oh my God, they can fix more stuff right from the get go. And 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 that senior firefighter, Ryan becomes a mentor to that, to that, to that young, that, like I said, that young guy or gal is like, you, you can see him. You, you've been there. You go visit, you go teach a program somewhere. Yep. And you, you see them, you see them there. They get up, they go there. They come out of that say, Hey, how are you doing? Ryan? It's nice to meet you. Honor me. Thanks for teaching. All stuff. And, and they walk over here and then they go sit down here and they go over here. And, and it's like, and you see them because, and then you've been to the places where it's just so dysfunctional. It's not even funny. And I look, and I love when the firefighters bitch about their officers. I'm like, dude, it's you. <laughs> yeah. Or do that, it's you. you you're, the, you're the senior firefighter here, and you're not taking care of this stuff? Because I have never, ever, ever seen one firefighter grieve another firefighter. Any of the labor management stuff, I do a ton of labor management stuff. I've never seen one, a, seen, a firefighter grieve another one because he said, I got to be a brother or sister, do my job. No, <laughs> they'll throw you out on your, on your sector C. You know what I'm saying? Right. We need more senior firefighters to step up. And again, senior could be some places, right? That could be five years. Oh yeah, absolutely. Years, you're the senior guy or gal. God, I'm, it's a plea. We need you. We need you to step up and mentor to make a difference. You are, you are the future. In our mentoring program, there's a slide we put up. I keep saying a slide, but there's another slide we put up to start off, and, and the title when it comes to making a difference, succession plan, and mentoring is one generation plants a tree while another enjoys the shade. Oh, and, wow. And, and my son, when he was on base, you know, as FMF corpsman assigned in the Marines, he said, I said, how'd it go today, kid? He goes, Dad, 
we are planting trees. And I'm like, he gets it. Right. You know, because it takes a while to see, you know, the fruits of your labor, if you will, you know, and, and we need to be really trying to do that. We need to get back to mentoring. I, I love the fact, you know, that was, a, what a great question. What does their seven, eight, nine year jump seat firefighter, the impact they have, how do they get to be the Bill Allen's? Right. There you go. Care about, care about the job, take care of your people, be a mentor and be the best you can be at what you're doing. Worry about the things you fix, not things you can't, you know, do what you can, what you can, when you can, where you can and have an impact. And, you know, stop worrying about things going on at city hall and stop worrying about other stuff. You know, th- those young, I'll, let me just finish with this. Those young firefighters, Ryan, aren't they? They're looking up to those guys and gals. They're yep. looking up. They look up to you as an officer, but they look up to that senior firefighter. They're watching what you're doing. They're, they're playing off what you're doing. They're drafting off your energy, whether that's positive or in some cases negative. So the importance of that jump seat, that senior firefighter, I, I just, I can't stress it enough. It's that, that, that's that you want to talk about making or breaking the fire services with that person. Chief, I, I cannot thank you enough. Number one for your friendship. I mean, it's so funny with when I walk in a room, you just start smiling at me. Come over, give me a big hug. You like, come here, give me a hug, brother. I, I cannot thank you enough for your, your friendship. I, I love having you here in the town. I love seeing you out on the speaking circuit. Thank you for coming on jump seat radio first and foremost. And thank you for your friendship. Even beyond that. I, I love our Twitter stuff. That's great. But tell the folks out there on Jump Seat Nation where you'll be, how they can contact you, and uh, I'm going to put some links to some of the videos that I think are a must-watch with you uh, in the show notes as well. Well, I appreciate it, buddy. I guess the easiest way is, is just go to my website, Pride and Ownership. It's spelled out, prideandownership.com. It's got my cell phone number on there. It's got my email address. Um, it also has our web, the web calendar, any of the classes that John Salk and I are doing together, or I'm doing by myself, of course, they're all posted if they're open to the general public. Uh, none of the corporate stuff is really, we do a lot of corporate classes, a lot for the military and so on and so forth. But on the fire side, it's all posted there. Um, Ryan, I, I can't, I can't thank you enough. It was an honor to, to, to be asked. I was excited about this. Um, I love talking shop. You and I could do this for hours, hours. Um, maybe days, but, uh, <laughs> but, but, you know, I, I just want to thank you enough and, 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 uh, that just your, your passion for the job, your energy, um, uh, you're, you're making, you're making an incredible difference. You're, you're an impact maker, man, dude. And just, and, uh, we need more, we need more Ryan Pennington's out there. I'll tell you right now, we need, we actually need more to, to, to kind of, I think a lot of stuff we've seen the headlines lately, a lot of that, you know, wouldn't be happening if we had good bosses, great bosses like yourself making a difference out there. So thanks for what you do, pal. I appreciate you. I appreciate, appreciate your friendship, brother. All right. That's it, everyone. Chief Lasky, thank you so much. What's your Twitter handle, by the way? I don't remember. Oh, right. it's, it's easy. It's at Chief Lasky. Oh. I try to make things easy for my – I'm half a Pol- I'm half Polish, half Italian, so I need to make stuff real easy for them. <laughs> so it's at Chief Lasky on Twitter. And uh, and, and I'll I, make sure to, to link all your Google Hangouts and everything you do. Chief Lasky, thanks for coming on. Next time I get you on, I'm going to ask you what's that paddle hanging behind you. That, that I don't have time right now, but that paddle is freaking amazing looking behind you. That's, 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 that was an honor. It's from a military group. And that's from the, it's from the Marines. Oh, nice. It, well, the Marines and the sailors, mainly from the Navy side, but uh, it's pretty cool. There's a good story behind that. Well, you have a, you have an open invitation for jump seat radio at any time and any place. And maybe we'll see you on the road somewhere. I've, I've actually upgraded. So I'll carry my mics with me. <laughs> well, thank you, brother. Be careful. Okay. All right. You've been listening to jump seat radio podcast, the podcast that needs a five-star rating. Make sure to head on over to iTunes and give us that five-star rating so we can have more members join the Jump Seat Nation. Like us on Facebook, facebook.com forward slash views from the jump seat. Follow us on Instagram at jump seat views. Like us on Twitter at jump seat views. And remember, you can be the person that makes a difference today. Take care, everyone. See you next week.